Hey guys and welcome to another video here on our channel The Guide. I'm Benjamin, also known as Taz, and today I present you a technique how to finish in one versus one situations. And I'm talking about the chip above the goalkeeper. And in FIFA 19 this was a little bit harder to pull off, but now in FIFA 20 this is a very reliable way on successfully scoring in these clear cut chances that you might have. And in this video I'm going to explain how to do the chip, but also how to use it, so what kind of situations you can use it and what kind of factors you have to consider. Two videos that we have already published are quite helpful for this topic. One is about how to use the radar and the other one is about the importance of ball contacts which will both help you for the timing of your chips. This will be explained in more detail in this video, but make sure to watch these videos as well. You can find the link in the video description. Before we start, just a quick reminder that you can join our The Guide community at our Discord server. We already have over 1000 people talking about FIFA, playing training games and helping each other out on how to get better. But not only that, people talk about FUD like player recommendations and do squad building together. If you want to take part in this, you can find the link in the video description to join our Discord server for free. To do a chip is quite easy. You only have to hold the L1 or LB button while pressing the shooting button. With this kind of shot you can chip the ball above the goalkeeper when he's rushing out of goal. But this would be a really lame tutorial if I would only tell you that. So we're also going to talk about how to properly execute the chip above the goalkeeper. The first step is to prepare the chip. The rule of thumb is you want to have as much ball control as possible when going for the chip. What do I mean by that? When we take a look at some examples at which I use the chip to score goals, you will notice that I sprint towards the goal with a lot of pace, but right before I take the chip, I let go of the sprint button. By this I achieve two things. First, I let my player have a better ball control, because with a lower pace he can have easier touches. Second, this does also help me to time my chip better. With a lower pace, my player does have more ball contacts in a short time, giving me a much better option to find the right timing for the chip. If you want to learn more about how ball contacts have an influence on your options, check out our dedicated video about this. So when you approach the goal and the goalkeeper rushes out, try to let the sprint button go, if this is possible. And if you can't, because you are ready to close the goalkeeper or an opponent defender, do it at least before you do the chip. I know, you're all expecting me to give you the golden rule on how much power you should put on your chips. Like if you're here, you have to use 1.5 bars, or from this position it's 3 bars, and so on. But it's not as easy. It depends a lot on the situation, so how much ball control your player has, is the ball bouncing or not, the position of the goalkeeper, and so on. I will provide you some guidance when we come to the next segment, so that you get an idea what is important, but before we come to that, the answer is 2. 2 bars for me is like the reference point and works the best in a typical breakthrough on goal scenario. So when you are in the edge of the box and you go for the chip shot, it usually has a good length with 2 bars. Now we want to discuss in which situations you can use the chip to score a goal. The first one is a quite obvious one. You were able to pick apart the defensive line and break through on goal. As a last resort, some of your opponents will rush out with a goalkeeper. This is the time to shine for the chip. Let's have a look on how your thought process should be in such a situation. My opponent did a mistake and with this pass I know that we will get a good scoring opportunity because there is only one defender left which is quite far away and I have another teammate to my side. Still, I take the first contact with full sprint to make sure that he can't reach me anymore and put pressure on my opponent to react. Now, this is the moment when you already have to think about how you are going to finish in this situation and this comes down to the behavior of your opponent. If he stays with the goalkeeper in goal, I have to keep sprinting, otherwise he will catch up with the defender. But if he rushes out with the goalkeeper and I take another contact in full sprint, the goalkeeper is likely to pick the ball up before I can shoot. But with the current camera view, you can't tell what the goalkeeper is doing. Now the radar comes in use. On the radar you can see whether the goalkeeper moves out of the goal or not. It's best to look at the radar in between ball contacts, since this is the moment at which you have to consider your next action. By looking at the radar I see that the goalkeeper rushes out. Therefore I know that a chip shot will be a good option and let loose of the sprint button to prepare it. My player slows down and I see the goalkeeper is out of the goal but not as close to me. 
Now the chip has to be high enough so that the goalkeeper can't reach it anymore. This is one way to beat the goalie with a chip. He stands right in the middle between the goal and your player. For situations like this, you have to make sure to power up your chip enough so that the trajectory of the ball gets high enough. In this situation it worked out and I was successful with it. But there's also another way on how you beat the goalkeeper with a chip. This is also in a breakthrough scenario, but sometimes you will just have another contact with the ball right before the goalkeeper is able to get to the ball. Because the goalkeeper is rushing out and so close to the ball, he then triggers a sliding animation or at least goes down to the ground. This makes it much easier to lob the ball above him. As you can see in these examples, the trajectory of the ball doesn't have to be as high since the goalkeeper is on the ground. So with the last chance of you having a ball contact before the goalkeeper, he slightly chipped the ball above him. So the outcome of this is pretty much the same, but the way on how you're successful with the chip differs. It's quite useful to understand which scenario applies because it influences whether you can do the chip in full sprint or not, or on how much power you have to use for your chip. As explained, when the goalkeeper is still in the middle, you have to make sure to power up enough so that the trajectory of the ball is high enough. This is not as relevant for the situations at which the goalkeeper goes to the ground. But still, you have to make sure to give the chip enough power because otherwise the chip can be not high enough or it does get too slow so that another defender can catch up and go for a clearance. The breakthrough scenarios are the most obvious ones to use the chip. But building up on the knowledge about the goalkeeper going to the ground, you can utilize the chip also in situations at which you end up in a 1 vs 1 against the goalkeeper much closer inside the box. Sometimes you have a very clear chance, but because the goalkeeper already rushed out, he closed down the shooting angles for you very good. And you also might have the problem that you don't have much more time to prepare a certain way of finishing. Then the chip above the goalkeeper can be a very helpful and efficient tool to still score in these situations. And also quite stylish, as you can see in these examples. Here we also had good results with a power of 2 bars for the chip. So, this variant can be used when you created a 1 vs 1 situation inside the box. The goalkeeper is getting pulled out by the opponent and because of that, the goalkeeper locked on already a lot of the typical angles for you to shoot on the goal. The chip then can be your last resort to have a good solution for this situation. Now at the end, I want to give you some further remarks about the chip to understand it even better. The first one is a little bit more obvious. The further away you are from the goal, the harder it will be to score. You have to apply more power, but this and also the greater distance increases the error rate of the chip shot. So you have to keep this in mind when going for long range attempts to chip the goalkeeper. Also, since the ball is traveling quite long, with a slower pace, it's more likely to get cleared by a defender. Next up, we want to talk about taking chip shots when the ball is bouncing. This is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it's easier for the player to lift the ball so that the trajectory is high enough and the goalkeeper can't reach it. But on the other hand, the accuracy of these chips goes down quite a lot. Especially if the player has to reach for it and is not as composed. So my recommendation would be to use chips on bouncing balls more often when you're closer to the goal. Lastly, I want to talk about a situation in which I decided against the chip and explain my reasoning so that you get a better understanding of the circumstances to consider. Here I play a good through ball to my striker and you can clearly see how my opponent pulls out his goalkeeper. So usually, at first glance, this would be a decent situation to think about a chip. But before I get to the ball, you can see that the goalkeeper is moving back to the goal. Even though at the moment when I get to the ball, the goalkeeper is exactly in the middle between me and the goal, it's not as likely for me to be successful with a chip. Why? Basically, I have two options to do a chip. I could try to do a chip with my first ball contact, but the problem would be that I would do it out of full sprint and these chips are harder to do. Usually these are only an option when the goalkeeper is so close that he tends to go down to the ground as previously explained. But as you can see the goalkeeper is not likely to do that and since I'm quite far away from the goal, I would have to power up the chip quite a lot. Under these circumstances it would be quite hard to hit exactly the right power and would have a high chance of failing, ruining a very good scoring opportunity. The other option would be to take one or two additional touches without sprinting to get more ball control and also closer to the goal. But this does give the goalkeeper more time to get back to the goal and also for the defenders to catch up. So I deemed the chip in this situation not as good and instead set up a normal finesse finish to the far post. 
So paying attention to the goalkeeper's movement and action as well in what kind of situation your player would be while doing the chip is very important to consider when you have to make up your decision. In the background you can see a very similar example. It's not like that there's always a clear right and wrong option and maybe sometimes a chip could work as well, but the circumstances have a huge influence on how successful you are with it. The chip wasn't a very reliable way to score in FIFA 19, but now has definitely a comeback in FIFA 20. As soon as you see the opponent goalkeeper leaving the goal line, you should consider the chip as a potential way to finish. The most easiest way to use it are the breakthrough on goal situations as shown in this video. I would suggest that you start to use it more and more in these situations to get a feel for the power and also confidence in this way of finishing itself. After that you can experiment with a chip also inside the box in 1 vs 1 situations when the goalkeeper rushes out of the goal. The timing of the chip has a huge impact on the success rate. As you can see in some examples in the background, sometimes you don't hit the right timing or power and you might fail. And to be honest, for me it does take some balls to be bold enough to go for the chip in some situations. When you have enough experience and also confidence, you can try to use the chip even in a little bit more challenging situations. So when the goalkeeper is not really rushing out, but still leaves some room to chip the ball above him. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and also share it with your friends. This helps us quite a lot. Don't forget to subscribe and also activate the bell to not miss any of the upcoming videos. In the video description you can find links to related videos as well as to our coaching website at which you can book your private coaching with our pro, top 100 or elite coaches to improve your game on your individual needs. Thanks for your attention, keep a clean sheet, I'm out.